How's it going? Bravo Hacks here with another tutorial on SMB Exec. In this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and go through the hash grab options and functionality uh, that exists within uh, SMB Exec. So when you take a look at this, you're already going to notice right away that uh, uh, version 1.2.3 uh, is new. So um, I did an update on Friday. Uh, and then as I continued to dig into it, I noticed there was a couple things that I broke and there was a couple things that I still wanted to fix. Um, so I just went ahead and, and did another update. Um, I haven't pushed this out to Git yet, uh, but it will be out there shortly. Um, just wanted to go ahead and get this tutorial done first. Uh, make sure that all the functionality works for you guys before I push it out to you. So as you see, um, the main menu is cleaned up quite a bit. So we're basically looking at three main options that are going to go to submenus and then, of course, uh, an exit option. So as I stated before in this one, we're going to go ahead and work on uh, obtaining hashes from systems. So we're going to choose option three here. Now, when you're on a pen test, a lot of times what our main goal is, is we want to get um, either local admin hash or domain cache credential or something that um, we can go ahead and grab and crack and then use on their network. The reason being is we want a valid login. We don't really want to go out and you know exploit 10 or 20 systems and and uh, send up flags or flares um, and have people find us. Uh, we want to very quickly be able to um, procure ourselves a, a valid login uh, on the network from a valid user that exists. So what it looks like to them for the most part as we use these credentials on the network is it's just someone logging in from somewhere. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, they trigger their IDSs on failed logins or a certain amount of failed login attempts within a certain amount of time. Um, a lot of companies do also, you know, they do monitor for successful logins, but you know, successful logins are happening nonstop. So a lot of times it's really just noise to them. They're not looking at it. Uh, it's really more of uh, something that they might go back to during a forensic investigation. But for the most part, um, they're not really looking at that and they're not really going to trigger on that and think that there's something wrong if there's a successful login. Now, if there's something where you um, send this, these credentials or a pair of credentials out uh, across to, say, 4,000 systems all over at once, then, yeah, that might trigger something. But for the most part, we're working within a certain subnet on a small number of machines. And our goal is really to find the system where we could obtain a hash or a token that we can use to either um, create an account on a domain controller or just leverage that account as a domain admin uh, to accomplish other tasks, maybe create a local admin user on another box that we want to get onto. Um, that way we're not creating an account, again, that might be trigger, triggering IDS, might trigger a SIM, you know, um, something that uh, would, again, throw up a red flag, throw up some flares, uh, and get us caught fairly quickly. So. What we really want to do is uh, use this tool to log into, you know, uh, as many systems as you can um, to pull down local hashes, domain cache credentials. Um, also, uh, there's a really dope tool called WCE Windows Credential Editor um, that's included in this version. And I'm going to show you the power of that throughout this tutorial. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. Enough of me talking. Um, we're going to go ahead and I've set up a, a, an XP workstation and a Windows 2003 domain controller. So we're just going to start by uh, obtaining the hashes off of uh, the workstation itself. So uh, we're just going to choose option one and you'll see there it says workstations and server hashes, uh, local and DCC, which stands for domain cached credentials. Um, so when a domain user logs on to a system, um, Normally, they're set to store, I believe by default, the last 10 credentials that have successfully logged into the box. And this is for a situation you can think of where someone has a laptop, they're at work, they log in, it authenticates to the domain controller. They then, then remove their laptop from the system, they go home, and they log in when they're at home. Well, when they're at home, uh, the domain controller can't be um, you know, connected to to authenticate. So it stores a copy of those credentials local so that um, that user can still log in even though it can't reach the domain controller. So let's go ahead and pick option one here. 
Uh, please provide the username to authenticate as. Now I'm going to use um, a low-level set of credentials I've created in my domain. Uh, it's basically just a user of the domain, uh, but it also happens to be a local administrator on this box as well. So for these types of um, uh, attacks or, or these options, you're going to want to use, at minimum, uh, an account that has a local administrator rights to the boxes that you're um, trying to get the hashes from. So I'm going to type in my username is emilum. Here it's asking me for the password, or you can provide the hash. So this, um, if you watch the tutorial on installing this, uh, we talked about it being patched for hash passing. So if you didn't have the clear text credentials, you can put the hash in here and it worked just the same. I do know my password. It's a very strong password, as you can tell. Um, pl please provide the domain for the user account specified. In this case, my domain is Bravo Hacks. If you hit enter, it'll be local host. Um, you can put anything in here um, as far as uh, the actual uh, domain that you're on, or um, if it's just a, a workstation, you put in you know maybe work group, or you can put in the actual name of the server. Um, sorry, name of the system here. So I'm going to go ahead and put in Bravo Hacks. Uh, target IP or host list. Uh, my XP machine is 11.11.14.177. So I'm going to hit enter there. You can see authentication was successful, and the hashes have been dumped. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that means. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the directory that was created by SMB exec when we first ran it. You can see in here we've got a hashes folder. So I'll open that up. And the IP address. Now if we did this across multiple IPs, like if we gave it a host list, it would have a folder for each IP address. And what we see when we look in here is we see it looks like it pulled down the SAM uh, registry file the uh, security registry file and the sys system registry file. So basically, SAM and system you guys might be familiar with. That's how you obtain the uh, local hashes. Um, when you pull down the security and leverage that with the system uh, registry key, that's how you get the domain cache credential. So let's go ahead and take a look at the local hashes list file here. And when we open that up, what we'll see is we see a list of all the local accounts that were created and their hash password values associated with it. So this is probably the standard that most of us are used to seeing here. Um, we could leverage these hashes. Um, we can use these now on the network. We can pass them around. Um, here we see the local admin account that's created and the hash associated with it. We could pass these credentials around and see if there aren't other systems that we might be able to get on and take further advantage of. Then if we go over here and we take a look at the domain cache credentials or DCC hashes list, you'll see that we've got a few here. We've got uh, J Bravo, we've got eMylum, we've got uh, the administrator, and we've got an IT admin. So here we have a file, and just look at it, it's named clear text passwords. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and open this up, and as you can see, it's exactly what it says it is. We've got clear text passwords for users that exist pulled straight out of memory. This is, this is what WCE does within SMB exec. This is the power of WCE, the Windows Credential Editor. If you look at this, we're looking at just for this account, and it's a domain account because it has Bravo Hacks, it's the IT admin's uh, domain account. You're looking at roughly 20 characters with just about everything under the sun you can imagine. Looks like it was created with a password generator, uh, which actually that's exactly what I did it with. I wanted to show you guys that um, this is something that when you look at the domain cache credentials or you look at the hashes, this is probably not one that you're going to be able to crack. Now this one down here, this is a local account. You can see it pulled this out of memory. Uh, that one probably will crack, but it might not get you very far. But this one for sure, you know, most likely is going to get you on a lot of other boxes. And that's something that you probably wouldn't be able to crack with something like John or Hashcat or anything like that. 
So this this is why I think that WCE is just the most awesome tool. Um, I used this recently on a pen test. Um, I sent it out and got about 4,000 clear text credentials, uh, roughly, uh, throughout the entire network. Um, so I was really able to just you know gain access to everything under the sun and and uh, you know had a good time doing it. So the next thing I want to go ahead and show you. So I want to show you the other option that's included here in the obtain options. I'm sorry, in the obtain hashes option. So I'm going to select three. I'm going to go ahead this time. I'm going to go after domain controller. So I'm going to choose option two. Um, provide the username to authenticate as. Now, you're going to need to be um, most likely domain admin in order to pull this off. So the credentials that you use at this point, you're going to need to be domain admin. A lot of times what I end up doing is um, if I get the clear text credentials, of course, I'm going to use those. Um, if I'm able to get the hash and crack that, of course, I'm going to, I'm going to use that or I'm going to pass the hash um, through this. Or, you know, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to create my own account. Uh, I'm going to elevate it to the level of domain admin or enterprise admin within the organization. Then I'm going to use that here. Again, it's always better to use an account that already exists. If, when you create one, um, you know there's usually sims in place like ArcSite or something like that, or IDS or some type of rule-based system that might trigger on that, find that, or even prevent it. Um, Quest Software has a has a great tool. Um, it stopped us on a couple of pen tests, um, but uh, you know there's always a way around it. And and like I said. Getting an account that already exists and using that is always the best way. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use jbravo. Uh, provide the password or hash. Again, I'm going to use the password. Uh, password. And then for the domain, of course, it's the Bravo Hacks domain. And then the domain controller IP address. For mine on my network is 11.11.14.15 hit enter now here's something that that's new it wasn't it wasn't in the other versions uh, I just put it in 1.2.2 um, it's asking you to enter the NTDS drive so basically um, the NTDS.dit file is what you're looking to obtain off of a domain controller and that most of the time exists in a folder called NTDS um, nine times out of ten it's going to be in C Windows NTDS NTDS.dit but I've started to see it in a lot of other places. I started seeing it on D drives, E drives, you know, T drives, all these different shares. Um, I saw, I've seen it in Windows. I've seen it in WinNT. I've seen it just um, as a base folder um, on, uh, you know, a share like a just a, a just any share that that's uh, hanging off the system. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and add this option. And so I'm going to go ahead and enter because I know mine's in C Windows. And then here it's asking you for the NTDS path. Again, this would be where you would just put the full path to it. I know it's in Windows uh, NTDS. That's where it's at 90% where it's of the time. So I'm just going to hit enter. And then it does a real quick check to see if it finds it. If it does find it, it's going to, of course, tell you, as you see there, that it found it. If not, it's going to say that it couldn't find it, and you're going to repeat that process over again. Uh, the best way to do it, if it doesn't come up that way, is to um, you know mount a share and kind of um, poke around and and see um, if it's on the C drive, um, you know where it's at, and just just kind of try to find it that way. Um, the next, it's asking you enter the drive to save the shadow copy in the system key. So the reason I put this was I actually found um, a system uh, during a pen test that. It was uh, in, in the Windows NTDS uh, folder, but there wasn't enough room on the C drive uh, to save it off. So uh, luckily they had a D drive that actually was the disk space. So this gives you that option. I, Like I said, I know I've got plenty of space, so I'm just going to hit enter. Um, and then I'm going to save it in the Windows temp folder. And it does a real quick check. You can see it said checking to see if the provider path actually exists, and it did. Um, it checks for the disk space, and it'll tell you there's plenty of disk space. And then at that point, what it'll do is it'll start. Cr it'll create a volume shadow copy. Um, it'll copy the ntts.dit and sys files um, local to your system. Now at this point, everything's happening locally on my system. Um, it's removed the files from the domain controller. It's removed the shadow copy that I created, and now it's 
uh, using other tools locally to extract the hashes. So it says success looks like we got what we came for. So let's find out if that's really true. So let me go ahead and go back in and open up that uh, SMB exec folder here. Uh, hashes. Now this this time you see it says DC or domain for domain controller. So let's open that up. And here you've got your ntds.dit. You've got your um, system key uh, that was copied over. Um, this is the NTDS output. Um, so this is actually what was extracted from the data tables and the link tables um, in conjunction with the system registry key. And then from this NTDS output file, um, the script quickly creates this uh, DC hashes dot list. And let me go ahead and open that up for you. And as you can see here, it puts everything very nicely here into the proper format. Um, you throw these into rainbow tables, you can throw them into John. Um, at this point, you can just set to, uh, to crack in these. So as you can see, hopefully from this tutorial, this hash grab functionality is actually, it's pretty sweet. Um, everything happens raw over 445. Um, we didn't have to obtain a shell or use an exploit of any kind. Um, again, the power of this uh, SMB exec is really in the WinEXE tool, uh, the Samba tool. Um, you know, allows you to run almost exactly the same as PS exec for Windows. It's got the system option. Um, you know, it'll just basically allow you to run commands straight against the system if you have the proper rights. So I hope you guys like the tutorial, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.